how on earth do you hire somebody? Where do you find them? What do you ask them? <laughs> you know, all of, all of these really brilliant tools, like how to do a paid trial. You bring somebody in, you like them, and then give them a paid trial for a month and see if they are a fit for you, mm. what the quality of their work is like. Hey, everybody. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by Louise Brogren. Louise Brogren runs a boutique marketing agency working with entrepreneurs, subject matter experts, and professionals who want to raise their profile through LinkedIn in a genuine and valuable way. Me. She's also an international speaker and hosts the LinkedIn with Louise podcast and YouTube channel. Louise, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brooke, and well done with the alliteration. I love a bit of alliteration. <laughs> we were we were giggling in the green room before we, we started recording because I couldn't get through the Louise LinkedIn podcast. <laughs> I just kept like fumbling over it. My tongue just like falls asleep on me sometimes and I just couldn't get it out. And then I managed to get it out. It's amazing. Well done. Um, well, so Louise and I have been connected here more recently through social and been chit-chatting and... I love your accent, first of all. Like, this is one of the fun things about chatting in real life or, you know, on the computer. Yes. And uh, you're just such a joy and such a breath of fresh air. So I think everyone's going to really enjoy Louise and all of her amazing LinkedIn advice. So first questions first. What made you decide to jump in and start your own agency? Oh, my goodness. Wow. So I I started this agency a it's only really been an agency about two to three years. Before that, it was me as a solopreneur, solo entrepreneur. Um, and I think we're going to dive into some of the adventures I've had along the way with that. But I think even when I was a tiny agency, I didn't really realize I was an agency, if that makes sense. And I think that's a situation that you know a few people can get themselves into. Um, but my business, uh, we do LinkedIn content marketing for clients. And the agency side of the house came from really wanting to grow the business and realizing that I couldn't just do it all on my own. And I wanted to build a team around me. So that's how we became an agency. And it, honestly, Brooke, I don't know if I, I think probably other people listening who have, who are at the beginning of their agency journey might might be nodding their heads along with this but it takes you a while to adjust to being moving from I'm a consultant I'm a you know a solopreneur to I have a team we are an agency and even changing the, the wording around changing from I to we sometimes I still forget to do that oh uh, I this is why I know this is going to be such a great episode because I've been there I'm sure everyone listening has been there right it's just like it's so funny to go from I to we. Let's just use that because yeah. I love that example, right? It's funny to go from I to we. It's exciting to go from I to we. And then at some points in the journey, it's scared. When it's you know terrifying. There's a we. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. So let's let's back up then because I think, again, I, I just feel like this is such valuable advice because you've gone through it all, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to know more about your journey from being a solopreneur. And like, how did you like you said, like I was a small agency and I didn't even realize it. So how did that realization kind of hit you? And then what were some of those key moments that led to you saying, okay, no, 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 no. I am an agency. <laughs> yes, I'm going to own it. <laughs> so I think during the pandemic, things changed for a lot of people. And before that, I was i was actually, in 2019, I came to America and spoke at a conference. I spoke at conferences in London and Dublin. And I thought, oh, 2020 is going to be the year I'm going to become a speaker. I'm going to be known as a speaker. I'm going to get paid to be a speaker, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, then obviously, for very obvious reasons, <laughs> that did not happen. And so I thought, well, like, okay, I can't be a speaker. But I actually... Interestingly, I did speak at Fid Summit and what was the other big one? Like two big global conferences in 2020, but they were virtual. And my claim to fame amongst my teenager children and their friends is that I was on the same billing as Mr. Beast um, at a conference. <laughs> you wouldn't have a, a clue who I am. <laughs> um, but I think then where I needed to get... Um, 
retainer revenue. I needed to get consistent revenue in the business. I think that's one thing that the pandemic taught me was in you know March 2020, all the people I'd been working with were suddenly like, oh, no, we don't have budget for this. We're changing what we're doing. We're not really sure what we're doing. Da, 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 da. And I thought, oh, I need I need more consistent, reliable revenue. Right. And I thought, well, what? how can I get that by? Because I'd already decided to niche down to LinkedIn at this stage. I thought, how can I get that? I can't really get that by writing people's LinkedIn profiles. That's not going to be something they keep coming back for. So what about doing the content writing for mm-hmm. companies and clients on LinkedIn. And I thought, well, you know, I don't want to be writing all the time. And to build up the business, I need to have a book of clients. And that's when I started to reach out to um, a thought, you know, it's a big move. Like, could I bring other people in? Could other people do this work alongside me? And there's a lot of, can I let go of control? Can I let go of you know, can somebody else possibly do this? Mm. Um, Will it be good enough? Um, Mm. And that was a a few of the questions I had to deal with before I started to bring in other people. Well, let's talk about that because I I still have this happen, right? Like, you know, I hear this a lot from from friends in the industry when when I talk to, and we'll talk about your coach soon too, because I want to dig into that. But like, I hear a lot, like you don't delegate enough. And it's hard to delegate, especially when you go from that solopreneur position yeah. to the entrepreneur because you know how you do it. You know you do it right. You built the the processes that go around, you know, mm-hmm. you know, building out that content or whatever you're – we all have IP, right? You don't even realize you have yes. IP, but you do because you, as a solopreneur, created all of those processes that mm-hmm. were then – repeatable and scalable Mm -hmm. by other people. So how did you, like, can you dig in just a little bit there and tell me how you, how you did that? Because I think that would be valuable. So I have a confession. I am half in, half out of that process right now. So in terms of creating the content for the clients, my team do all of that now. But the training and the um, I do a thing called the LinkedIn VIP intensive Mm -hmm. that is currently still all me, Brooke, because I can't quite let go of that and hand that over to somebody else. So it's it's tricky. So if you if you are in a particular uh, speciality, so our speciality is LinkedIn. And I look around and I think, well, who else can do LinkedIn really well? Well, everyone else who's doing LinkedIn really well has their own business. <laughs> so how do I bring those people in under me without them walking off with my clients? Yeah. And that is probably why I haven't actually brought in somebody else to do the LinkedIn training. And that will be 2024, I promise. I'm going to do we'll hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> but the the writing piece, I looked around for I well, I look say I looked around. I I said I'm looking for writers to come in and write content for the clients. Mm -hmm. And I have worked with one writer, um, Lauren, for actually three years now. And she's she's fabulous. And she made it really easy to work with. And she's a fabulous writer. So when I brought her in, I suppose you have to take a risk. You have to take a risk bringing people into your team. And I asked her to write for one of my clients and her writing was so good. And I was like, oh, (laughs) she's like, she's brilliant. She, that's far better than I could do this. And I was like, that's like a realization. It's like, oh, actually there's other people out there who are professional trained copywriters of which I am not. I don't have a marketing degree. I don't have a copywriting qualifications. I remember when I first started my business, speaking to somebody who was a, a mentor for me, and I said to him, "How can I? How can I? How can I be somebody who trains people on social media marketing when I don't have any marketing qualifications? I'm going to have to go to university and do a postgrad year in digital marketing." And he looked at me. He's like, "Louise, no, you do not." <laughs> he says, "People are already paying you for this. Do not go off and get a qualification. Yeah. What are you trying to prove? And who are you trying to prove it to?" And I said, well, people aren't going to hire us because I haven't got a market. And he says, well, they already are. You just need a bit of faith and confidence in yourself. Um, but I started, I brought in that first writer who's still with me today. And I think it's baby steps, Brooke. So 
I, I saw that she could deliver and suddenly the realization was, oh, people are really good at this skill and now I'm not spending all my time actually mm -hmm. doing the doing. I can go out and try and win more business and that's really where it started. And how I ended up with an agency. So I have now three writers on my team and an account manager um, somebody who does the graphics and we've just brought in somebody else to do video editing. So we do video um, content for LinkedIn as well. So the team is growing and growing and I have an operations manager and it's like, all of a sudden I have this whole team. Where did that come from? <laughs> How am I managing this? I've become a grown up. Hooray! <laughs> it's happening. Um, I love the bit that you said though about realizing that your first writer did a better job than you did. Because I think that's what a true leader is. We have no spirit of competition yeah. with the people within our own walls or within our own agency, right? It's identifying those strong suits. And as a leader, being able to say, you mm -hmm. are so much better at this than I am. I want you to excel. I'm going to place you here and take myself yes. out of it. Knowing yes. that you're not the smartest person in the room. I think that is such a great piece of advice that you just yes. gave. Um, we also talked about in our pre-call that you had a coach who actually mm -hmm. encouraged you to take the leap from solopreneur to agency owner. So can you share any of your coach's specific advice um, that they gave that kind of influenced your decision around doing this? Yes. So uh, well, one thing I would say is the coach I worked with, I worked with her for five years. Wow. And I think that that is, plays a huge part in it because she knew my business so well. Um, and she could see where I could take it to. So anyone who who hasn't ever invested in a coach really strongly think about it um, because I think that longevity of, of working together, um, you know, I came to her, she, it was actually her idea that I focus on LinkedIn. So that was one of the first uh, um, changes that she helped me make in my business or show me the potential of it. And then she said, Louise, if you want to grow this business, if you want to move beyond um, you know, paying yourself contractor rates, basically, is what you, you, you're doing. Um, she says, I, I think you could think about building a team around you. And, you know, she had um, training, supportive training on how to hire, which oh, is wow. amazing because that is so it's like, how on earth do you hire somebody? Where do you find them? What do you ask them? <laughs> you know, all of, all of these really brilliant tools, like how to do a paid trial. You bring somebody in, you like them, and then give them a paid trial for a month and see if they are a fit for you, mm. what the quality of their work is like, et cetera, et cetera. So she really encouraged me to think about um, becoming an agency. And also it, she said, you know, do you want to be known for somebody who does content marketing for companies or do you want to be known as somebody who delivers training because they're really you've got you should really focus on one or the other um, and that's kind of how sometimes I describe the business as it, it's almost like it's in two parts so the agency is the whole content delivery for the clients which actually frees me up to go over here and do the bit that I really love doing which is teaching people on one-to-one -one or doing workshops um, so it's almost like it's two wings of one business. Yeah. And that's where, you know, over the long term, that's where I see this going, you know, in 10 years time, um, building up the whole agency model. And I've, I'm sure you've read the book Build to Sell, um, having a productized service, which is what we have got to, which I'm so proud of. And again, that was my coach's influence as well. How can you productize your service? So our LinkedIn content management is it's really easy for me to get a sales call with somebody to describe it because it is literally it's this or it's this and that's what we do and there's no footer and bite with you know let's make a proposal up for this client let's add in this or let's add in that and that also makes it really easy for my team because they know okay we've been hired by this client and either we're doing company page content alone or we're doing company page content and ceo content and that's it it's yeah. so easy. It's easy for me to sell. It's easy for my team to know, okay, client B is coming on board in January and they have this package. We know exactly what to do with this and how to work it. And that has been absolutely brilliant as well. And that I think that's whole part of that becomes, you know, replicable, scalable 
And that's how you couldn't really do that without a team. So it needs to be an agency to, to be able to deliver that, to be able to grow it, I think. Yeah, I love too that you, I want to highlight something you said there, which was like, not in these words, but you basically said we stay in our lane, right? We're not trying to be everything to everyone. And I think that that's something that at least I struggled with in mm-hmm. the beginning um, when it was just me when I was a solopreneur. Yeah. You know, I had to pivot very quickly from being social media strategy to done for you social media. So content included. Yes. And that was fine. But I found, you know, in those early years that people would say, can you do blank? And I would be like, yes, let me figure out how to do that for you, right? Because you just want to say yes to everyone. And I think now, as you're saying, as we've gotten, you know, 10 plus years into it, Mm -hmm. saying no is actually way more important than saying yes. It is so freeing. Yesterday I was working out. So I, I'm, I, I part of a shared office space. It's like a co-working space. And there's a guy going around and he he was asking people to come and and be part of an audience for a video he was creating for his business. And he asked me, would I have time to do it? And I literally just met him there and then. And I, in my head, I had my coach saying, Louise, you don't have to say yes to everything. <laughs> and I just said to him, Look, wishing you all the best with it. But actually, I'm, I'm really focused on a piece of work right now. Uh, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's actually very empowering to, right. to do that. Um, but the coach I worked with, people who may know her, she's um, she runs a podcast called the Biz Chicks Podcast. Um, she's called Natalie Ekdahl. And one of her phrases she would say to me is, Louise, just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should. Yeah, it's so and good. I, got a, <laughs> I had, a, had a, a client call this week, Brooke, somebody I've worked with for years, and she says, oh, we're really interested in doing this other thing. Would, is that something you can help us with? And I got really, like, I was like, oh, that sounds so exciting. It sounds so exciting. I thought, no, Louise, that is not what your focus is for 2024. So you've got to say no, because just because you can do it doesn't mean you should, because then you start to dilute what you're yes. actually known for, which is all about LinkedIn. So yes. um, I said to, I, I'm, still, I'm still really friendly with my coach. And I sent her a message on um on LinkedIn last week, and I said, "I've got your voice in my head." I was, I, I was having an issue at work, and all I could hear was your voice telling me what to do. I was like, "I don't even need to be coached by her anymore because she's literally in my brain." Oh, <laughs> that's amazing! I'm sure she was so. Pr- I'm so proud of you too. And I think you know, if you've been watching or listening to this show, I'm talking to you, audience, for a while now. You've heard more than 10 people, almost everyone we I've interviewed say that niching down is so important. And part yeah. of that is that piece of saying no, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can't niche down if you're saying yes to everything. Yeah. So I got, you're just given a zingers every single question. I love it. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you faced during the transition and how did you overcome them? Because, you know, it, it, we see all these people who are like, you know, I earned six figures in one month's time and you can too, as they're like leaning on their Ferrari. And that's just not what it's like for the majority of us. So are you willing to share some of the difficulties and how you got through it? Absolutely. So one of, one of my biggest challenges actually this year, this year has been um, hiring too fast, mm. hiring someone too fast, and a very lovely person. And they, one of people who who hire will be nodding along. It's really really hard when you when you meet somebody and you're interviewing them and you just get on with them and you think I really like this person. I mm-hmm. think this is going to really work well. So you kind of overlook the fact they're not actually on properly qualified for what it is you want them to do. So I brought somebody into my team and realized that for about two to three months, I was spending so much time hand-holding and course correcting with this person that I wasn't able to actually go out and do the bit that I need to do, which is to bring in the business. Mm. And so, you know, I think the realization was so the invoices were coming in from my team, you know, on 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 paying them. And I was looking at, so I measure, this, uh, this is something I learned as well, measuring everything, you know, how much does it cost, how many hours does it take per client to deliver the service? Yes. And, and I could see that the clients with this new team member um, were so, way more hours than I had with my initial team members and I thought this is you know maybe it's just because they're settling in but then I realized I was spending a lot of my time 
trying to help this new team member. And I thought, you know what, this is not working. And that was it was a massive challenge because I, I probably let, kept them on Brooke longer than I should have because I felt like, I felt emotionally attached to them because they were a team member and I was paying them, a, I was paying them a wage and everything. And I thought, no, 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 Louise, come on. You've got to be, you know, mature about this. And people say, you know, hire slow and fire fast. Well, I have learned that lesson. So I hired way too fast and took way too long to let this person go. And once I did let them go, they actually said to me, yeah, I'm pr it's probably not the best fit job for me. And I was yeah. like, oh, why have I struggled with this for so long? And actually letting that person go freed up so much more of my time. And then I got new clients in as a result. So actually now I'm, I'm now hiring for that position again, but I'm going to be, I learned my lesson. I'm going to, you know, do it properly this time around. Um, I think we've got the right person starting in January. So that's really good. Awesome. Yeah, I love, I love that because I think that's a constant struggle. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I find ourselves falling back into the trap of, hiring fast and firing slow or not firing, yeah. but you know, letting yeah. someone move on to a better, yeah. better suited role. But I also love what you said earlier, which I want to highlight again. You said you give a 30 day kind of paid working agreement together. And that's similar to what we do. So we work with all contractors, mm -hmm. um, but we do a 90 day first agreement. And then the longest term we ever do is six months with our contractors, oh. because that gives us the ability to understand how, you know, productive and efficient they are, but it also gives them a chance to renegotiate uh, their rate, oh, know, their I hourly it. rate. So it's a win-win on both sides. That's great. But I love that you said that because you're right. Like it sometimes like, it's like you and me, like if you, if you and I were on the phone, right. Or uh, for an interview, I'd be like, I love this girl. Like, this is it. Like we're hiring her today, right this minute, you know, but what if, you know, I'm asking you to do TikTok and you do LinkedIn, you know, it's not yeah. the right fit. So yeah. I think it's really smart to do that. Um, and let's talk about a little bit about your team because you have kind of a hybrid model, right? So you yeah. have some employees and some contractors. So how did, how did you, come to that decision and how do you kind of deal with the balance of uh, mm. you know the team you know being employee versus contractor yes. remote all that good stuff yes I have to say hiring an employee was probably the scariest thing I've done in a long time in my business and there's a wee bit of a back story to that because my um my dad had his own business and he um they had a few issues with letting go of staff back in the in the 80s and 90s there was you know there's there's a few court cases and stuff um over things that happened and so i had the fear <laughs> hiring <laughs> the fear um and so anyway so my coach again suggested that hiring is better than contracting and a lot of it is to do with stability and building a team that that stay with you um and and you've got kind of more almost as the employer even a bit more security knowing that this person if you have a contractor they can just say well look I'm done I'm I, you know yeah. I'm, I'm off to live in Iceland and I'm not you know I'm not interested in LinkedIn anymore Louise I'm like oh okay that's great but well, who's going to write for your five clients yeah. um so I hired my first employee uh, about a year ago and it was I don't know Brooke it's it's been a, it's been brilliant and they're local to me now they're Canadian but they're local to me they live in Northern Ireland as well oh. and one of my contractors lives in Northern Ireland as well and there's just we were just able to get together in person we've we've um the, my employee asked me could we do a, you a one in-person day um, every month, which we're going to be doing in 2024, and um, because we don't have an office space, we all work virtually. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought, well, it you know, doesn't really matter if they're where they are, or whatever. Um, you know, we're all virtual, and that's all super. And yes, of course, I've, I have team, and I've a team member in Nashville. I have a team. I have team members in the south of England. Um, but meeting, to getting together in person with my team was an eye opener for me. Um, and I think being having an employee, it's really it's been really interesting because they have so many hours per month that they work with me. And initially I was like, because I was really new to this whole thing, I'm like, 
how many hours do you have left this month? Do you have capacity <laughs> for a new client? It's like, uh, ma'am, you know, I'm, I'm working Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and we have we use Toggle to keep track of everyone's yeah, hours and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I think with the employee, it's they they just it's they've more of an input into how I am creating things. So the employee, so I have one employee and everybody else is contractors. However, there is a program here in Northern Ireland that is run by um, a local government body that I have signed up to work in. And part of that program is that I have to hire uh, people within Northern Ireland because it's all about growing the local economy. So by the end of the two years uh, of this program, I will have hired three people. Um, so that is that's also impacting what I'm doing here in building this. Yeah, I want to talk about this because I think this mm. is, again, this is something we discussed previously, and this is yeah. fascinating to me. So you're in Northern Ireland, and they are supporting your growth, essentially. They, they, they yeah. Explain the program a little bit more because I think you said they pay like up to 40% of the salary or something like yeah, that. Yeah, of, of, of a senior um, team member. Yes. So it's called Ambition to Grow. And the idea behind it is to bring investment into Northern Ireland. So if anybody wants to go and do a quick Google, Northern Ireland had what we call the Troubles for mm -hmm. 30 years. And 25 years ago, we signed a peace process, which is um, amazing to me. Um, so throughout my whole teenage life, from my childhood, we had a lot of problems here in Northern Ireland. And part of that out of the peace process, um, they, there was a body founded that to aim at helping bring money into Northern Ireland to grow the economy and promote peace. So the program I'm on is called Ambition to Grow, and they are helping me uh, bring in external clients. So in exchange for their support and help, and the, it's phenomenal. Do you ever go to a workshop and you're like, oh, this is next level. This is this is really great quality stuff um so it's really brilliant support but there's also financial support to encourage me to hire people um and i'm actually on a program called uh, as part of it they're they're going to take me to the netherlands and introduce me to um, potential customers and clients so it's lots of really strong support aimed at helping local businesses grow hire locally and bring in external money into the country because Northern Ireland is, is really, there's only 1.7 million of us in total. Mm -hmm. So we're not that big a country, to be honest. Um, so we, you know, we want some of the moolah from, ex, from outside countries. <laughs> I just think that is such a innovative and wonderful program. Like I, you know, it just makes me think like, I wonder what kind of programs are here that I don't know about here in the mm -hmm. US. And funnily enough, we were talking again, previous to the show. And I was like, hey, I've actually been to Belfast. And you were like, no way. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Was say to me, I want to go to Northern Ireland. I want to go. And I'm like, come. <laughs> I'm a brilliant tour guide. Um, well, so yeah, because I can't believe you've actually been here. It's amazing. It was a long time ago. But yeah, I've been. And now when I go back, I'll just look you up and we'll hang out. Yeah, We'll do the Giants Causeway, the Game of Thrones tour. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so are there any other specific programs or incentives that they have there that you've utilized, you're thinking about utilizing? Because I just feel this is a whole other topic on itself. But I do want to just just dig in a tiny bit. Yes, I'm actually part of another program for that's aimed at women entrepreneurs, and it's called the Grow All Island program. So it's Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, which is what people see as Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 16 women-owned businesses in the north and 16 women-owned businesses in the south. It's a six-month program. And it was so lovely. We got together in a castle um, about three weeks ago. It was a like stunning castle, uh, all of these women. And it was just wonderful to meet other women at the same level of business and get together. Was, we were there for two days to really focus on plans and growth of the business. And then we're getting together once a month um, for the next six months with, uh, there's going to be three joint all island events and the rest are, there's going to be events in the North and events in the South. Um, and so that's a massive support as well. So there's lots of support out there. I think wherever people live, there are 
I think there are programs of support for small business owners and agencies everywhere if you know where to look for them. Um, mm-hmm. And it can be, you know, it, it can be hard to find out what's actually available for you locally. But there usually are organizations who are out there who want to help you. You just need to go and look for them um, and apply to be part of them. But I think, honestly, Brooke, I feel like it's once you get into one of these things, it's like all these other opportunities kind of open up for you and appear. Um, and you just got to go for them. I think sometimes people hold back on applying for things because they think, well, I'm never going to get to be that to be in that and this this all island women's program I saw it come out and I thought that sounds amazing and I thought right just fill it in and send it off so I did <laughs> it's like I couldn't believe when they offered me a place <laughs> they did like 150 people applied for it wow. um, and I think that's actually been a game changer for my whole business is that I have just gone what have I got to lose I'm just going to go for this and I'm going to apply somebody's got to get it so why shouldn't it be me um, and that's been my attitude I think really since I started my business 10 years ago and that's led to some amazing opportunities um, trips to London to the House of Lords and even Buckingham Palace. Ooh, yeah I think that's another really wonderful piece of advice you know you have to you're, you have to be your own advocate right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I do think you're correct once you start to look for these places where you can help improve yourself or your business or both. It it kind of opens up another world. And I would also say if you can't find something, make your own. I literally just last week or the week before formed a little um, women in marketing group, like a little mini, mini mastermind with women who, you know, are in our space and um, who have speaking careers. And we're all just looking to help each other because, we didn't know of any like women groups that we wanted to join in particular, right? To talk yes. about the things we wanted to talk about. So we just made it ourselves. But I think, again, like you have to advocate for yourself. You And this is why it's so important to your point earlier about creating those processes that are repeatable that you can hand off to the team because while they're doing the, the content creation on LinkedIn, you yeah. can be looking for these programs and places that yes. can help you grow. Yeah. And that's it's so funny that you've just done that because I have literally just done the exact same thing. So I was, um, about a year ago, I was in a, like a workshop for agency owners and I was going through my, e- so I've, I've turned into one of those people who's got thousands of emails in their inbox, oh. which is awful. Um, all red, they're just not filed. They're just not being deleted or sorted out. So I was deleting emails and I found this email chain between me and these like seven other women who were part of this workshop a year ago. And I just emailed them all. I said, how is everybody? What have you all been up to since last year? And they all started to reply back with the updates. And I thought, this is brilliant. And I said, would anybody be up for doing this as a mastermind next year? And they've all said yes. So we have, we've, we've got the doodle poll out. We're finding, we're finding our yes. first appointment. And that's gonna that we're gonna get together with in January. And I think, you know, I love that. I love doing that kind of thing. But on a serious note, I think when you are in a space that you and I are in, Brooke, where you have an agency and you've got all these people underneath you, whether they are employees or they're contractors, you need to have people that you can bounce things off, you know, things that you're going through. And um, because you've got to keep, you know, this is not a, like when you're doing your team meeting, you can't just lay it all out on the table all the things you're like stressed about oh, no. because your team will be going, oh no, this is not working out. Do we need to go, you know, do we need to start looking for another role? Um, so having a group of other people who are in the same space as you, who you can share ideas and bounce ideas off, um, I think is so valuable. And, you know, we use, we, I have got the best operations manager, honestly. She's just amazing. I'm not going to tell you anything else about her in case someone tries to steal her. <laughs> um, but we, she has set up so many processes and templates for me in, uh, we use 17 hats for when we, the leads come oh, yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Um, that she's literally pulled them all out and put them in a Google Doc and there's, over 100 pages of this stuff. I'm like, what? How is that? She's so organized. It's amazing. Again, somebody else in my team who is so like a 100 times better at that than I could possibly be. 
So it's like, why would, you know, why would I try and struggle and do all that myself when I can have somebody like that in my team who is just, who loves doing it as well? Like she loves that kind of stuff. Whereas I would be tearing my hair out to trying to do it and try to put it all in place together. Um, so yeah, I just think getting people around you that you can talk to who are at the same level as you is mm-hmm. just phenomenal. And then getting people like um, my operations manager who are just like, you know, I was going to say she's like a professional operations manager, but of course she but is. But of course she is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I just think what she's doing is like, it's just, it's just wonderful. And I love her. <laughs> yeah. But I love that. Again, I just, it's so important to surround yourself. And, and I'm talking about not just like these mastermind groups or like yeah. shows like this where we're trying to help, but I'm talking about on your team. Having people that you don't have to pull along that are pushing mm-hmm. you forward, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. That's such an important piece of advice that you gave yeah. um, because I think, you know, a lot of times, again, it's, it's such an, a balancing act what we do, but I think if you're the right kind of leader and if you truly are like a servant leader, you want mm-hmm. people on your team who are going to push you, the leader, yeah. into mm-hmm. being better also, right? Yeah. So if you have it coming from all directions, it's really hard to fail. I think. Um, So you've been in the game for over 10 years. What, you know, there's been a lot of changes (laughs) from our (laughs) early days to now. It has been a wild ride. How do you stay relevant? And how do you kind of put your hands around this ever evolving marketing landscape that we live in? Well, this is the beauty of niching because all I need to worry about is LinkedIn. I mean, and there's a lot of stuff on LinkedIn. I was interviewing somebody for my podcast yesterday and she said, you know, Louise, there's been 160 changes on LinkedIn, uh, new features on LinkedIn this year Mm -hmm. alone. Like how on earth could you keep up to date with that across all the social media platforms? So niching down to one platform has been pivotal, like absolutely pivotal in my success because no, like I enjoy it as well. I love geeking out about stuff. Like I love investigating things. Like if there's a new feature that comes out on LinkedIn, I make a video about it and stick it up on YouTube. And it's really interesting. My YouTube channel is very unprofessionally developed. <laughs> <laughs> but people really love it because it's not what I mean by that is the videos are they are factual. Here's what to do. Here's mm-hmm. the new feature. Here's how you can use it. There are no whistles and bells on that on my YouTube channel, but I've actually won clients from it because people are searching for something on Google on how to do stuff on LinkedIn. And usually my videos are probably in the, in the search results. In fact, most of them, most people say that to me. Oh, I was looking for something. Louise, your video appeared in the search results. I thought, well, that's great because that's what it's supposed to do. Um, so it's not the shiniest YouTube channel, but I think people find it really useful. But that's because I just have just immersed myself in what, how can you use LinkedIn? How can businesses use LinkedIn? Because it's this whole other people looking for, you know, the next career move and the next mm-hmm. job thing. That That's not what I do. I literally fo- I'm niched down within. It's how do, can B2B businesses use LinkedIn to get more business and win more business and what all do they need to know about that? And because I'm so, um, I'm just really engrossed in it. I really enjoy it. So yeah. I used to write for um, Social Media Examiner, the articles about LinkedIn. And that was actually brilliant because I would have to get really, really specific about the nitty gritty, about a new feature or a new thing. Like I, I was talking to a client today about product pages on LinkedIn, uh-huh. which a lot of people don't even know they exist. But I wrote the article on how to use product pages. And I said to this client, no, I can't quite remember this, but I wrote the original article so we can just go and look it up. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I have a question there too. So you said your YouTube, I was going to ask you, like, how do you, what channels do you find most effective for new clients? And it sounds like this YouTube channel is a big part of bringing you new business. What are some other, you know, how do you retain and attract clients in your agency model, I guess would be the question. So I think nearly all of my clients come to me through referral and word of mouth. Um, And I'm consistent in posting on LinkedIn 
how to use LinkedIn for business, which might sound like really obvious, but a lot of people that I know um, who are running agencies forget to actually let people know how, how, what they do and how they do it. So um, YouTube has brought me some really interesting clients and it's what I would call high level. Mm -hmm. Um, So large globally recognized companies. Um, So VP of um, private capital for XYZ company that if I said everyone would go, yeah, I know that company. Um, would come to me and say, oh, I I was looking on YouTube on how to do something and I found your video and I'd like to connect with you. So I get all these really big um, senior level executives connecting with me on LinkedIn because they found me through Googling for something and it has turned into clients. So one of our clients we've just um, wrapped up with, they've grown so big that they have now hired an in-house team to do their, their social media marketing. But the client found me because he was living in China and what new, someone told him to build his business, it's a financial services company, to build his business, he needed to be on LinkedIn. He's like, well, I don't know how to use LinkedIn. And he had gone to YouTube and he found me and he he was Irish. He is Irish. He's Irish. He lives in China. And he found my videos and he reached out to me and says, can you help me with this? And we ended up working together for a whole year on their content and now they're, they're going to the next level and they're bringing it all in house. Um, but that has been a really interesting way for people to find me. Usually people will connect with me because they've heard me at a podcast like this or mm-hmm. they've seen my videos. And then once they're connected to me, they see the content that I talk about and provide. They realize that I am an expert in this area and then they'll reach out to me, you know, maybe six months down the line and say, well, look, we would really like to, we love what you're doing on LinkedIn. We'd like a bit of, of that. Um, can we have a conversation? So um, our newest client is in Tennessee and she has known me for, this is very typical. She's known me for about three years has been following what we're doing and is now in a stage where she says, right, okay, we have grown to, uh, we've got 10 people on our team. We need to start taking LinkedIn seriously. Louise, can you, can we work with you? And that would be very typical of how a client comes to work with me. So they tend to already know me. My um, Irish client in China did not already know me, but we got to know each other pretty fast when we got on a Zoom call. (laughs) It's amazing. I mean, this what I'm hearing you say is social media marketing works. It works for really? what you do and how you get clients. Hmm, who, who would have thunk? Um, so my last question is for those who are listening or watching who are solopreneurs right now and they're mm-hmm. contemplating this transition of, you know, really starting to grow the team and become an agency. What is your one very best piece of advice that you could give them? My best piece of advice would be to get someone to help guide you through doing this, actually, Um, because it takes a lot of bravery and you could you could kind of stumble along in the dark um, trying to do this on your own to build a team. But actually, I honestly, Brooke, I think hiring a coach to work with was the best the best decision I ever made. And you know, having someone who is like my a friend of mine, Erin, she talks about when you want somebody to work with, somebody who's two steps ahead of you is all you really need. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really true. Mm-hmm. I, my coach was a lot more steps ahead of me when I worked with her. Um, but I think getting some support and advice and guidance on how to do it and l- let, you know, your podcast is an amazing resource. Oh, the the group that I'm starting in January, we were talking about it. They're like, yeah, I love that podcast. It's so rich and you're really brilliant. Oh. It's a brilliant resource. And pe- listening to other people talk about what they've gone through and, and the challenges they faced and the wins that they've had. Uh, but definitely hiring someone to work with you who knows what they're doing and is a good fit, I think would be my my top piece of advice. Um, and how do you find that how I find my coach was I listened to her podcast and it just resonated with me and I reached out and said you know how what way do you work with people um because I can I could kind of see how she how she did things and it fitted for me so either get a referral for someone as a coach or maybe 
um, you know, follow them online and see, do, do you think this person would work, would be a good fit for you? I think that would be um, what I'd recommend. Yeah. I love that advice. And I love to find someone who's two steps ahead of you, right? Because they've been there. They can tell you how to do it. Yeah. Um, well, I know I'm just going to mention this. We get to see each other in real life in just a few months in February at Social Media Marketing World. I'm so excited. Yeah. And I want to just throw this out there if you're watching or listening. I was just telling Louise that we're going to be doing an agency owner meetup on Sunday morning. I don't have all the details yet, but Sunday morning at some point at I think 10 a.m. we're going to do coffee and just just like this. We're just going to have a bunch of agency owners, some who have been on the show, get together mm -hmm. and chit chat about agency owner life, create, create friends, another network perhaps. Um, so hopefully they'll join us there. But other than social media marketing world, where can people find you? What are you working on? All the good mm. things. So my website is, it's Louise Brogan everywhere. It's louisebrogan.com is the website and on LinkedIn and YouTube as Louise Brogan. Um, but if people want to, are interested in a bit of help with LinkedIn, um, I do have a free um, guide for getting started on LinkedIn. If they would like a copy of that, I can make that available, Brooke. Uh, if we do, um, louisebrogan.com forward slash M-A-S for Marketing Agency Show, if people want to go and check that out. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh my gosh. Well, we will put that in the show notes. And the show notes, if you have not been listening or watching to the show lately, are in the YouTube channel. So you can go to the YouTube channel when this comes out, go down yeah. to the description and it links out. We'll link out Toggle, the tool that you talked about, and we'll link out this free guide. So thank you so much for joining me today and sharing all of your wonderful wisdom and just being you. I just, like I was saying, I just knew, I knew this was going to be great because you just have that kind of energy. So thank you. <laughs> Brooke, thank you so much. I can't wait to, to meet you in person in San Diego. It's going to be fab. Hugs, hugs for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye.